Uh, hello, everyone. I am Salman Sultana. Uh, today, I and my coworker Lee Chen will be presenting our work on malware detection using a deep learning on control flow. Malware detection is an increasingly difficult problem. In the recent years, malware ecosystem is changing rapidly. In this context, deep learning shows great promise for automated malware analysis. However, deep learning based malware detection is still in early phase. There are static analysis approaches that classifies a binary as benign or malicious based on file header or raw byte analysis. Uh, these approaches face challenges due to code obfuscation and adversarial perturbations. And uh, there are dynamic analysis approaches profile runtime API call sequences over an execution. Uh, in general, runtime data is more difficult to perturb, but recent research has shown that um, an attacker can mislead the classifier and uh, achieve high misclassification rate. So the question remains, how can we make deep learning based malware detection more robust? In this work, we will uh, focus on characterizing a program execution based on fine-grained control flow traces. Um, we consider malware detection as a control flow classification problem. So we consider the attacks that uh, somehow manipulate the execution flow. Uh, it covers a wide range of attacks, including uh, control flow attacks such as Rob job attacks, file list malware that run under the cover of a benign application, and uh, data-oriented programming attacks that don't cause uh, illegitimate control flow transfers, but may make an application take unusual control flow path. In our proposed malware detection system, we use Intel processors hardware to capture the complete control flow of a uh, program execution. In this work, we explore the image representation of uh, trace and uh, convert the control flow trace to a time series of images. In it, the deep uh, neural network framework that we propose profiles an application runtime behavior and is trained on both benign and malicious traces. Uh, at uh, training, HNET, uh, uh, classifies the images and uh, builds a benign malicious application behavior model. At testing, uh, HNET uses this model to classify the incoming control flow images, and a malware detector aggregates the image classifications over the entire trace and detect exploits based on a threshold. To give a little background on Intel processor trace, it's a debugging, uh, low overhead debugging hardware to capture execution flow in highly compressed trace packets. It captures control flow transfer at non-deterministic branches, such as um, conditional branch, indirect branch, and asynchronous branches, and timing and other software context information. For uh, control flow packets, it generates uh, target IP packets for indirect branches that contain the target address and indirect branches. And for conditional branches, it generates taken, not taken packets, where each bit represents one conditional branch, one for taken and zero for not taken, and one TNT packet aggregates a number of conditional branches. The advantage here is it's all hardware provided low overhead data. There is no high uh, uh, software instrumentation or performance overhead. And uh, also, since we use like low level, low level um, hardware generated traces, so it gives like portability across different systems. Um, by combining uh, Intel PT data with the image binary, we uh, can reconstruct the exact set of sequence of instructions that were record, uh, executed on a CPU, but that takes a long time due to the large volume of trace data. We, however, noticed that the control flow packets can be, represent, uh, can be used as an encoded representation of control flow transfers over time. So we designed a lightweight uh, conversion of control flow packets to image pixels, where each image pixel is one byte unsigned value. For TNT packets, there are two variants, short TNT that is of one byte. Here, each bit B1, B2 represent one conditional branch. So in this case, we convert the whole uh, one byte packet to one pixel value. For the long uh, uh, variants, long TNT packets that may be of up to eight bytes, there are two byte header. Uh, so we remove this header and get the payload size and convert each payload byte to one pixel. The target IP packet has one byte header, and the target IP payload may be of up to eight bytes, depending on the compression mode specified by the IP bytes. So in this case, we remove the header, uh, get the target IP payload, reconstruct the full target IP address, and to normalize against ASLR, we compute the one byte uh, binary ID that the address belongs to, and the four byte target offset from the image base. And then we convert each byte to one uh, uh, pixel, leading to five pixels. So now Lee will talk uh, the rest of the presentation. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Lee. I'm a data scientist at Intel Labs. Uh, so uh, my 
my part will be focusing on how we construct the deep learning uh, model, which we call it hierarchical ensemble neural network keynet to classify, uh, uh, to do uh, ex uh, effective exploit detection on Intel processor trace. So uh, someone has discussed that we can convert the uh, control flow package into pixels, and you're probably wondering why we're doing that. Hence, I'm providing some uh, intuition of why we wanted to apply computer vision uh, for malware detection. And based on our visual inspection uh, of the benign versus the malicious traces, we are seeing the dissimilarity among the patterns of the Intel processor trace segmented images uh, between the benign and the malicious images. Um, however, within benign or within malicious, we are seeing kind of similar patterns uh, within each class. So uh, such uh, visual inspection gave us some uh, foundational evidence of applying computer vision. And particularly, uh, deep learning has demonstrated state-of-the-art performance on large-scale uh, image classification problem. Uh, hence, in our analysis, we wanted to leverage the information we learned from computer vision natural images to apply to this problem from uh, on co uh, control flow packets. So here is the overview of what HeNet procedure looks like. So our first procedure, once we have the stream of uh, uh, pixel streams, we'll conduct segmentation. And the next step is from the segmentation, we'll convert it into images. And the third step is we wanted to learn a train and low level behavior model on these segments of images so we can kind of know what are the behaviors of benign versus malicious uh, uh, applications. And last but not least, we have the top level ensemble of framework so we can average out uh, the prob time series probabilities to produce whether we wanted to uh, classify this as benign or malicious. So pictorically, we have pixel streams and segmentation will result in segments of the pixel streams. And then from the segments we're converted into in here, we are converted into a specific size of images, you'll see why. And then uh, from the behavior model, we obtain probabilities of whether this is benign or malicious. So each trace will result in a time series of probabilities uh, identity, um, indicating whether this is benign or malicious. And finally, we will average it out as the top level ensemble model. And particularly in terms of training the low level behavior model, so Intel Processor Trace is trying to uh, collect the control flow packets, and usually, it, uh, depending on your granularity of sampling, it can produce a lot, large amount of data. And what we are utilizing here is we are training the low-level model via transfer learning. And uh, needless to see, uh, say, there are a lot of advantages for transfer learning. Particularly, we are viewing this problem as a computer vision problem. Hence, we wanted to borrow some of the features that are learned from millions of natural images to fine tune it on our data set, which are also represented as images. And also, we wanted to accelerate the training on our own data set and, of course, maintain a high classification accuracy and maintain low false positive rate. Uh, rate. Um, because of the transfer learning framework, uh, we can support accelerated training of Inception, VGG, ResNet, a variety of DNN architectures. Um, I will describe how uh, HeNet performs on our uh, data set. And in our experimental setup, we have uh, benign uh, popular document uh, readers and uh, those benign documents. And we also have uh, return-oriented programming attacks on such document reader uh, in, in Windows. Um, so we collected about 348 benign PDF samples and 299 malicious samples. And we use uh, Intel V2 amplifier driver to collect the uh, uh, Intel processor trace. And our uh, uh, validation, training validation setup is such that 10% uh, of the data is uh, hold out for out of sample testing and uh, uh, training validation uh, testing uh, ratio are 80, 10, 10. And in terms of data preparation, 
Uh, once we uh, generated the set of pixels, we will segment in our experiment, in this experiment particularly, we segment the images of size 224 by 224, and they are of great uh, scale originally. And then we actually replicate the uh, single channels into RGB channels, so we have 224 by 224 by 3. And after the segmentation, we have about 40K, uh, 400K benign images and two, uh, 70K malicious images. And uh, for testing, we have 48K benign and 29K malicious. And particularly in our training in this experiment, we selected Inception V1 for transfer learning and we observed that our model converged within 10 epochs. And on the test set, we have uh, 98, so this is, first of all, we examined a low level model, which is what are the uh, behaviors of the segmented images. Uh, and the low level model, we have quite high accuracy with 98% with low, quite low false positive, and the area under the curve is 0.99. Additionally, we compare with other deep learning schemes such as training from scratch, as well as other classical machine learning algorithms. And note that in here, all the um, uh, classifiers, uh, even the cl classical ML algorithms, are trained on the image representations of Intel processor traits. And we believe that if we have other data representations, uh, the other ML classifiers can improve greatly in their performance. Um, but this also shows the advantage of using deep learning in this problem that we can uh, save tremendously the cost of feature engineering of the control flow packets. And furthermore, we wanted to interpret our deep learning models. And particularly in here, I mentioned we are trying to use deep learning to automatically generate the features. Then the next thing we did was we tried to visualize th what the features are and uh, visualize how the features are distributed using TSNI representation and did some correlation analysis from the a global average pooling layer. And uh, it turned out the deep learning features are quite well separated. Now it's time to talk about the top level ensemble model. So after uh, training the low level behavior model, each trace as it runs through the low level behavior model is actually represented as the top line in the green, uh, a time series of predicted probability on whether each segmented image is benign with some probability or malicious with some probability. And most in our framework, uh, in our experiment turns out most of the time series are quite smooth, indicating high prediction confidence level. And the top level ensemble is averaging the time seri series of probabilities. Hence, on the total uh, 53 test traces, we have achieved 100% accuracy with zero false positive. Also conducted uh, Will Coxon rank some test on the resulted uh, uh, probability distribution, uh, as well as uh, examining the probability distribution of the top level ensemble model to show that uh, the top level ensemble model actually uh, have quite high prediction score. So uh, some discussions about our future work. Um, so ongoing evaluating on larger samples, and our next step is actually focused uh, on adversarial machine learning. Uh, first part is what are some steps to evade or exploit the vision-based low-level model? So today we have heard a lot of talks about uh, 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 attacks on the natural images, uh, fast gradient sign, deep fool, universal adversarial perturbation. Uh, direct pixel perturbations can change the control flow images. However, the malware, from the malware domain, we have more constraints. So uh, beyond that, we also wanted to see how we can craft functional and operational malware so we can bypass the low level behavior model. And Another aspect is to explore the top level ensemble model. And here is one example that towards the end, we have something that's more normal. Uh, it's calling a normal function, even though this is a malicious trace. So maybe we can utilize some information like that to bypass the top level model. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, I was wondering if 
you tried it without transfer learning? Because it's not immediately obvious to me that uh, natural images would translate to uh, something useful for a, a trace that looks like that. Uh, so yes, actually we did also try with transfer learning. Uh, earlier, uh, uh, without transfer learning, you mean training from scratch. So in the experiment I showed, the training from scratch was uh, done on a relatively shallow neural network. And then later we tried ResNet and we, we have uh, higher accuracy, uh, but not as high as um, in the uh, uh, transfer learning sense and also uh, uh, sorry, at the same uh, epoch convergence. Um, also, what we're noticing is that using transfer learning, we're able to converge much faster. Okay, let's thank the speaker again.